Hi, it's Martin from South Wales Injector Removals again. Um, been asked to do a video on how to take a turbo off. I had a look on YouTube and surprisingly there's very few videos on showing you how to take the turbo off uh, an M9R uh, standard 2 litre Bavaro TVP. Um, so for ease of the video, rather than me spending two or three hours trying to get it off when it's on the van, um, I've got this uh, scrap engine so um, the turbo is good so we'll take it off um, right if you're taking it off in the van um, look at the video where it shows you how to take the front end off you don't need to get the whole front end off um, but you will need to get off the airbox frame the airbox the big rubber um, air intake tube that comes from here goes around the corner and into the um, airbox and you'll also need to take the uh, intercooler pipe off that comes, attaches to there and goes to the front of the intercooler. Obviously, um, if you go around the front, go around the front. Right, if you're looking at the van, you'll be looking at the engine. This is where it sits in the engine bay. You're facing there and it's on the back of the engine. You've got a rocker cover sat on there. Um, I've taken it off and it's on the shelf there for some reason. Um, so that's going to be in the way, but it's it only sits about there. So there's not a massive amount of stuff that's in your way. It's just unfortunately it's at the back of the engine. So um, you can get most of it off from the top, but you will need to jack it up and get underneath. Um, it is a DIY job if you're fairly competent or fairly confident, but uh, if you're not sure and you've got limited tools, I would recommend taking it to a garage, um, TV specialist, or um, someone you can trust. Uh, it should take about two and a half, three hours, all being well, to sort of strip it off and put it back on again. Um, I know, you know, some people say, oh, I can do it in an hour. Well, if you can do it in an hour, that's off to you. Um, I take about two or three hours, because I don't want to rush it. And uh, if you start rushing it, you'll start rounding bolts off and that just is a whole new nightmare. Right, if you want to come back around here again. Let's see. Here's the turbo. That's the, the cat or the DPF, whatever you want to call it. Um, obviously with the newer 13 plates it hasn't got that. It's got a great big uh, catalytic converter uh, DPF down there. So to start off with there'll be a, a pair of straps going across the top here with a pair of 13 mil um, bolts in it under the 13 mils you've got 10 mils holding the exhaust on you'd be able to undo those three pull the exhaust out the way that gives you a fair bit of room um, if you want to give yourself even more room drop the um, the drive shaft off at the driver's side but it's not necessary um, you will be able to undo this and when it's out the way you have got quite a bit of room at the back of the engine so you undo the four 10 mils there. Um, you can't put enough oil on these. Um, give them an oil in, give them a wire brush in, and then you undo the four off of this. Um, undo, there's three 13s that hold the bracket on. I'll take it off now. This has already been obviously taken off. So should come off a little bit easier. So there's a, a bracket that holds the bottom of the um, exhaust on. So you undo the three thirteens. That will allow you to get back it off.
Right. That's the bracket underneath. Basically, sits on like that, braces against the engine. There's only two 13s holding it to the engine there. So you can take that off, undo the, the three 13s that hold it there, pull that off. That'll be able to make you um, able to get that out the way. These are fairly flexible and bend out the way. So you'll be able to pull it out the way. You don't need to pull it all out the way. If you undo it from the exhaust, um, you should be able to just you know, leave it rest there. But it does come out of the engine bay. And if it's in your way and you get stuck with another bolt, it's just gonna make things worse. So, right. Um, initially, when you're testing your um, turbo, what you wanna look for is if you've got um, oil in your intercooler system or it's squealing. If you look inside the turbo there, when you put it in, you want very minimal, as you can see, very minimal, you know, bring the camera on first round, so very minimal movement there. As you can see, there's probably one, um, one mil movement. That's the air intake. Inside that, um, inside the main body, uh, there's two fans. That one sucks the air in. That one it compresses the air inside there and blows the air out there. What you want to do is make sure there's no play in there. If there is play, it just means the bearing inside has collapsed. And that's what you'll find is either excessive oil going into your intercooler system or it's making a squealing noise. As the bearings go, the turbines start hitting the inside of the compression chamber and um, just makes a, a squealing noise and then you know it's got to go. Um, so right, that's checking it. You've got the oil feed pipe um, that sits on the top. That's eight mil. There's an eight mil um, nut there, a bolt there that uh, basically holds it in position. That can be um, pulled. It is fairly flexible. You can take it out the way. If you want to um, leave it in position, you can. But if you don't, um, it's not hard to get off. Let's see, it's the, what's that, 10 mil on the top there uh, that bolts into the turbo. Another 8 mil there. There's another 10 mil on the bracket there. And another 10 mil where it actually bolts onto the engine there. Um, for the purpose of this video, like I say, because I'm stripping the engine, I'll take it all off. So, start with... This is actually the oil feed pipe that feeds the turbo. So when you um, change your new turbo and you stick it on, it should come, as long as you, if you haven't bought it second hand, um, you bought it new, um, you should have a syringe comes with it. And that's basically to prime the bearing inside the turbo. So um, basically fill the syringe full of nice clean oil. Put it on the top where the, the oil intake goes, fill the cavity up with oil, and then spin the turbo turbine itself. You can spin it by hand, spin it with your finger. Um, you can get, I think it's only a, like a six or a seven mil nut on the end. You can put it on there and turn it round with um, a, a ratchet or anything. And then that just fills up the, the actual void inside because when they come from the factory obviously they, they test them and balance them and uh, they probably drain them of oil because the courier says don't send it with oil in it so like I say this is the pressure pipe that actually feeds the, tur the, the oil to the turbo so if you've got um, a leaking um, O-ring or to, you know, the um, leaking oil on the top of the, the turbo or on the back of the engine. These are quite a, a prime suspect for leaking. There's a couple of other places that the oil can leak out of. Um, but as far as the back of the engine goes, it's pretty much the only place where there's pressurised oil. 
take that off. If you take, like I say, if you're taking it off in position, you can take that off. It does make life a lot easier. The only thing you've got to do is make sure that these copper washers, um, they, obviously, because they're copper washers, they're soft and they compress. That's what causes the seal. You want to try and keep them as clean as you can. Nice bit of clean rag, a little bit, bit of blue roll. Um, just keep them clean. Obviously, when you put them back on, clean the face of the top of the turbo. Make sure no debris falls in. Same as cleaning the face on the engine. Uh, clean, clean around the hole. You don't want debris, dirt, or bits of crud going inside there. Next thing is your oil return pipe. I would highly recommend when you undo this, don't try and take it out from the engine. It's only pushed in and it's got a rubber o-ring, but nine times out of ten you'll end up breaking it rather than getting it out. So if you can, or if you're a fairly unlucky like me, try not to, um, to take it out. Just undo it. It's only two 8mm bolts. They shouldn't be that tight. And because it's not under pressure, this is just the oil return. So as the oil's fed into the turbo under pressure, it's used and then just drops out through gravity back into the sump. To re replace the clean oil. If you again, if you haven't bought um, a new one, and it's a second-hand one, and you haven't got a new gasket, when you separate this, be careful. The gasket has got. See if I can move that. See, see now that is really stiff. So. You basically just want to tease it back and that's it. The gasket itself is a steel gasket and it's just got little fold over arms to keep it in place. Again, when you're refitting it, make sure you clean debris off of there, debris off of there. You don't need to put mastic or sealant on there as long as the surface is nice and clean and dry. Um, that should be enough. Um, and obviously because the turbo gets really really hot don't go put in gasket sealer on there or something like that because it'll just melt and then you'll end up with a nice big oil leak right um, if you bought it second hand it might even come with the exhaust manifold if you don't want to split it then you don't have to um, you can undo the the EGR pipes it's only two 10 mils, that comes off, and then there's all the 10 mil bolts, I think there's eight, going in, in there to the manifold, and you can take the whole lot off, complete. Um, this one's been started to taken off, so I'll just go with taking the actual turbo.